I'm in the mood for love Simply because you're near me I don't know the words to no <laughs> songs, man Shit There's Jesus. When you watch that video and see these pictures, it's hard to believe that Cassie and Diddy were actually never in love. For over 10 years, which spanned from the early 2000s all the way up to the mid 2010s, Diddy and Cassie were seen as that couple, or you could say couple goals. Well, I'm here from the future to tell you that the videos and pictures, none of it was real. In fact, this relationship might be the story of an alleged abuser and the woman he abused because on the 16th of November, Cassie filed a 35-page, $30 million lawsuit against her former boss and boyfriend. Diddy was accused of assault and all types of abuse including physical abuse, sexual abuse, domestic abuse, and he was also accused of sex trafficking. Immediately after the lawsuit was public, Diddy's lawyer responded. He stated that the allegations were offensive and outrageous. Then he went on to explain that for the last six months, Cassie has persistently requested $30 million from Diddy, that she was threatened to write a book and that the lawsuit was just blackmail, and even stated that Cassie was only looking for a payday. However, barely 24 hours after the lawsuit was confirmed, and despite the lawyer's words, Brother Love, aka Diddy, opted to settle with Cassie. In fact, Diddy might have set the record for the fastest settlement in history. After the settlement was announced, Diddy released a statement saying that they have decided to resolve the matter amicably. I wish Cassie and all her family all the best. Love. Diddy's lawyer also released a statement stating that the settlement is in no way an admission of any wrongdoing and that it doesn't undermine Diddy's denial of Cassie's claims. However, you've got to wonder. Why would an innocent man decide to pay a settlement that was probably millions of dollars for something he isn't guilty of? I mean, Brother Love could have channeled his inner Johnny Depp and sued Cassie for defamation. Cassie's lawsuit explained that she and Diddy first met back in 2005, and at a time when Cassie's career was just starting. Diddy heard Cassie's first single, Me and You, and decided he wanted to sign her to his bad boy. Cassie was signed to Ryan Leslie's Next Selection lifestyle group at the time and she and Ryan were also dating. Diddy found a way to convince Ryan Leslie to partner with Bad Boy Records and this is what led to Cassie signing the Brother Love's label. Cassie signed a 10 album deal with Bad Boy Records. Her debut single, Me and You, even peaked at number 3 on Billboard Hot 100. So partnering with Diddy seemed to be working perfectly for her career. However, Diddy became more than just a label boss. Instead, he was said to be deeply entrenched in her personal life. In fact, the lawsuit states that Brother Love asserted possession and control over Cassie's career and personal life. Cassie was first told that Diddy was interested in her by a hairstylist, and she was quite disgusted by the idea. I mean, the man was 37 years old while Cassie was only 19 at the time. Fam, he was almost twice her age. However, this didn't seem to stop or bother Brother Love. The first incident of alleged abuse happened at Cassie's 21st birthday. Diddy was dating the late Kim Porter during this period, and Cassie was of course with Ryan Leslie. Diddy wasn't even invited to Cassie's birthday party, but Brother Love invited himself. And at the after party, Cassie stated that Diddy pulled her into a bathroom and forcibly kissed her. Diddy then found a way to gradually separate Cassie from her boyfriend, Ryan Leslie, by telling that the invitation to awards was for only her and not Ryan. And despite Cassie rejecting him, Diddy didn't stop telling her to spend time with him or inviting her to spend the weekend. Cassie stated that on a night in September 2007, Diddy insisted on taking her out. After Cassie got into his car, she noticed that Diddy was high and drunk, and he gave her ecstasy. This would be the first of many times that Diddy would allegedly get Cassie high. Cassie stated that shortly after, Diddy created a fake event poster to get her to Miami and away from her boyfriend. Then he got her very high and this would be the first time he had sex with her. Diddy then began showering her with gifts, bought her a car, and a lot of designer outfits. 
Around 2008 or 2009, he bought her a house in Manhattan, which was also just a walking distance away from Diddy's house. Then in 2010, he bought her a house in LA, and this time, the house was only 5 minutes away from Brother Love's house. Cassie stated that by now, Diddy controlled every aspect of her life, even down to the makeup she used, the clothes she wore, and every flight she took were all paid for by Diddy. He even had her medical records sent to him. And all through this period, Diddy also used to beat her from time to time. The physical abuse got so bad that at some point, Cassie started to experience memory loss. At some point, Diddy asked Cassie what name she used to call her grandfather. After she told him that she used to refer to her grandpa as Pop Pop, Brother Love insisted that she start calling him Pop Pop. Cassie was then exposed to Diddy's violent rivalry with Suge Knight. Diddy was once told that Suge was at Mel's drive-in diner in LA. Diddy grabbed multiple guns from his safe and was obviously on his way to get Suge. Whenever Diddy beat Cassie, he would apologize by showering gifts, which is just the classic behavior of an abuser. What you, my, what, what you gotta say now? What you gotta say now? You ain't got shit to say when you put your girl on the snap. Baby, yo babe. I mean, shit getting weird. Come on, baby. It's hot outside. You fucking wrapped up in that blanket. Let's go jog on the beach. There was also a time that Diddy allegedly hurt Cassie so bad by kicking and hitting her, then forcing her out of the car right on Fifth Avenue in New York. Young Jock, who was formerly signed a bad boy, also stated that Diddy controlled Cassie and she did whatever he wanted. In fact, Cassie's side-shaved, iconic hairstyle is because of Diddy. Puff jumped out. Me and Cassie sitting next to each other. My wife right here, Cassie right here. The nigga jumped off the bar, came over and said, Yo, yo, Cassie, tomorrow, I want you to shave the side of your head. And I was like, I'm like, what the fuck kind of request is that? <laughs> like, so when I'm like, what the fuck? So when I look up there, this white woman side of her head was shaved, my nigga. And the bitch looked good with it. So I was looking at Cassie, I was like, well, I... I was like, you're not about to do that, are you? She said, well, I mean, whatever Sean wants, I'm going to do. And there were also occasions where Cassie looked uncomfortable around Brother Love. Diddy also told Cassie that their relationship is like Bobby and Whitney Houston's relationship. And Brother Love didn't even stop here. After some time, Cassie stated Diddy began using her for his sexual escapades and to fulfill his bedroom fantasies. Diddy told Cassie that it would turn him on to see her sleep with another man. Cassie stated that Diddy forced her to sleep with different male sex workers on multiple occasions. At some point, he began calling these bedroom encounters freak-offs or FOs, and whenever she didn't want to do the FOs, she would be met with Diddy's fists or kicks. During their FOs, Diddy would supply Cassie and the male sex worker with coke, ecstasy, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and alcohol. While Cassie and the other man were performing, Diddy would watch and use his hands to take care of himself. He would also take videos of the action. Whenever Cassie deleted the videos, he would find a way to restore the deleted clip. Cassie stated that she tried to break up with Diddy on multiple occasions, but he would always threaten to destroy her career and remind her that she had a lot to lose. Cassie had a short relationship with Kid Cudi in 2011, and she even ran to Kid Cudi's house to avoid Diddy harming her. But after Diddy found that she and Cudi were together, he showed just how dangerous he could be. Cassie stated that Diddy told her in February 2012 that during Paris Fashion Week, he was going to blow up Cudi's car. But he wanted to do it when Kid Cudi was at home with his friends, and guess what? Just like a prophecy? Cuddy's car did explode in the driveway, and even Cuddy himself confirmed the story. Damn, brother love. Fortunately, Cassie eventually got away from Diddy in 2018, but not before another disgusting incident. Cassie stated that they had dinner at an Italian restaurant, and after dinner, Diddy followed her to her home in Malibu, which he of course bought for her. He forced himself into the apartment. He then tried to kiss her, but after she pushed him away, Diddy forcibly removed her clothes, unbuckled his belt, and this is where the R word comes in. Brother Love forced himself on her, despite her repeatedly telling him no. After this incident, Cassie left the apartments he bought for her, 
returned the car and thankfully found a way out of her bad boy contract and away from brother love. No one can confirm whether these allegations are true or false, but when a man decides to settle within 24 hours, well, it's up to you to decide what you think. Thankfully, Cassie is now married with two kids and we hope she recovers from all that trauma she suffered. When you watch that video and see these pictures, it's hard to believe that Cassie and Diddy were actually never in love. 